Dana, can we start? Sure, sure. Uh, hold on, give me a second. Hi everyone, can you see, can you hear me? Can Dana. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi everyone, thanks for joining us. This is Dana from Lazada Research and Consulting Team. With me are my teammates Anders and Chita's team. Um, and also in all of our trainings, we will be joined by our external partners from UX Army. And in some trainings, we will be joined by one of our local moderators team. So while we are waiting for a few minutes before we um, officially start with the, the training or the learning session, there are a few people joining us who have been invited or registered to join in these trainings. So just for everyone's consent, we are recording the session so that it can be played back later on, especially um, for those people who weren't able to join this training sessions or uh, if we need a reference later on, if you might not catch everything at once or need like a refresher sometime, this will be of help. And we can also document the most recent um, processes and steps for this usability testing and other methodologies. For the next few weeks, um, we will be conducting like a four part learning series on um, unmoderated usability testing, which is happening in a short while, um, followed by the card sorting, which is happening on 28th of September, and then the tree testing on the 5th of October and remote moderated research using deep dive on the 12th of October. So if you wish to join in the next trainings and you find this like helpful for you and your team, please approach any of our team members or Harris and we will include you or send you the invite. So in terms of usability testing research, some of you might have seen this as notes in the multiple groups that we have. So it's about um, how you can do your usability testing. So we encourage to, to do your DIY, which is um, do it your own. But if you can't, uh, we have a support system right now. So, but the aim of this is that you and your team understand what is usability testing and how it can be um, beneficial for your improvement in terms of like UX, UX design and also product design. And this can be applicable across domains, domains and topics. So everything is documented in this um, link so that um, feel free to access and learn more. So you can like screenshot this and um, access it. So the first one, um, it's about usability testing. It is, uh, the access is open to all the audience, but this one, um, how do we set up a usability testing test or research? Um, this access is to set up the test only for available, uh, available only for product team members currently. So if you need assistance, you may contact each of our members if you need access. <clears throat> So as mentioned today, we will um, learn more about the unmoderated usability testing research. So we have done several research using um, unmoderated usability testing across ventures, which we set up tasks and send it out like an online survey. 
So you are not present during the data collection, but later on, um, we can go back and collect enough information from the different testers using the user advocate um, UX Army app. So later on, um, our presenters, our researchers from UX Army will be able to um, explain more about this. So afterwards, you can go through the recorded videos and analyze it. So for the unmoderated usability testing, you will not be um, you we will not have the chance to ask questions and like the moderated usability testing but the benefits of the unmoderated usability testing is that it is more faster and easier to set up and can get more quicker results and low cost in terms of budget so um, we will learn more about this in this learning session so if you have questions along the way while ux army is presenting please um, type in the comment box um, and then so that our team or the UX Army team will be able to see it and address it or provide answers at the end of the session. So without further ado, introducing the researchers from the UX Army who will conduct the training for today, passing on this uh, to Melissa, Dia, and Uswa. Enjoy learning, everyone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Dana, for the introduction. Okay, so as mentioned, uh, today we're just going to go through um, the unmoderated usability testing. So this is the agenda for today. We're just going to briefly go through, um, you know, why do unmoderated usability testing? Um, um, a few tips for um, when you're designing your, your um, unmoderated UT. Um, and then I'm going to go through our platform and what you can, you know, just an introduction to like, it's the interface, how would you set up a test on it and um, the types of tasks you can set up on our platform. And um, after that, I'll do a very quick demonstration. Um, it won't be a step-by-step -step demonstration, but it's more to show you the interface um, when you're creating the test. And then um, we'll also show you what the test will look like from the user's point of view. So, you know, um, gives you a bit more of understanding of like what your task will ultimately look like instead of, um, you know, just you do the task and you don't know whether it looks good from the user's point of view. Yeah. And after the demo, I will show you the report um, that you will be able to see for the unmoderated um, UT um, on our platform. Okay, so first of all, uh, why do unmoderated usability testing? So um, Dana did mention this earlier, but it's, you know, it's useful if you want to gather data quickly for your um, designs. Um, you know, you can have your, your users um, interact with the product in their um, natural environment rather than having them um, you know go to like your office or whatever and it might be a little bit stressful for them um, you don't have to supervise them which um, already frees up a lot of your time because you don't have to schedule sessions with your users and the turnaround is quite fast and um, the cost is also quite low okay so just some tips for designing um, your unmoderated uh, UTs. So when it comes, because for unmoderated tests, you're basically giving a set of instructions to your users and you are hoping that they understand and follow those instructions um, and interact with your prototype accordingly. So, but you also, um, you don't want to basically spoon feed them and tell them step by step what they're supposed to do because that's going to um, you know ruin the purpose of doing a usability test right you you don't want to give your testers the answers to your test yeah you also don't so you don't give super direct instructions that clues them in to what you want them to do um, also try not to essentially like force them to perform the specific interaction because you know otherwise you won't know if it really works or not and also when you're writing your instructions um try and avoid using any terms that the test 
the testers won't be familiar with. Yeah, so maybe instead of prototype, you can say like um, sample app instead. Yeah, and when you're, if you have to refer to any specific parts of your design, um, be very mindful of the words you use because when you work on your product internally for a long time, um, it's probably a habit to refer to certain things um, with like terms that only your team members use, but your actual users won't know that this is what you and your team call a specific function. So like try to avoid using those um, like technical or design terms. Um, the things you should do is when you're writing your instructions, give your testers a bit of a scenario to um, you know, like set the stage for what it is you want them to do. Right. So instead of telling them, telling them like um please like search for a product and add to cart, uh, or like you know, apply a voucher to your uh to the item you're buying, you can tell them like, okay, you're shopping on a budget, you know. Can you like show us how you're going to buy stuff and like stay in, in within your budget? And then you can observe whether or not they search for cheap items or they search for items but then use the vouchers. Yeah. And then um for like the number of tasks, you don't want to put too many. So we recommend between seven to ten. So um it doesn't wear out the testers and like make them feel fatigued towards the end because once they start getting fatigued they might uh be a bit like shoddy in the way they perform their test perform the test or in like the feedback that they give give you yeah and also um when writing your instructions try and state some things they should be able to expect during the course of the test and as well as um you know how they should be giving their feedback because you can ask them to speak their feedback out loud but you have to be quite clear about it otherwise they they will just you know browse the app or whatever and not say anything about your design and then that way you have no like you don't have a lot of information about how well your design is performed you know so you can put very um direct notes like um like please speak out loud while test while um you test this website or like uh you know this uh this app may not perform exactly like a real app because it's a sample you know stuff like that and you and you can even um communicate through the instructions like um what the end point looks like so um Maybe you can write in your uh, instructions like uh, your your task ends when uh, you see a notification that says voucher successfully applied. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here we have like a a sample of like how you can plan or design your task. Um. So this is um. I'm going to show you two samples and both samples are something that um, UX Army and some uh, team members from Lazada have like done together because um, normally the Lazada designers will uh, create one document and then we will come in and we will also um, add on to it. So when you're designing your task, um, you can start off with the objective of you know what it is you want to find out from this specific task or like what you want the users to do and just like put it very simply so it's it's understandable and since this is for your own reference then you can have like your draft instructions which you will just revise throughout the course of the task planning and if you have any questions you want to attach to the task like maybe you have your task, you want to follow up with some survey questions, you can also include that. Yeah. And you can also add what you also can also add success criteria, which not everyone will hit when they're doing the test, but it will be helpful when you are trying to um evaluate the the footage. So 
um, you know, between the time you create the, the task and the time that you're actually viewing the results could easily be a month. So you always want something to refer back to so you can, uh, you, re you remember, like, okay, this is what I originally wanted to test. Okay, now that I have my results, is what I wanted to test actually happening? Like, are the users doing what I'm hoping they're doing? If not, um, what are they doing instead? Yeah. So this is a, another sample where, you know, we also have objectives up here. Um, so what I have here is actually a objective for the domain itself. And then here, I also have an objective for the task, just the task alone. Yeah, and here are like some of the success criteria provided by the designers because they are the ones who would know exactly what they, they want to see from the results. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start showing you our unmoderated usability testing tool. Okay, so if you want to log in to our unmoderated dashboard, um, what you'll see is um, your dashboard with your tests. So of course, if you're a new account, you'll be empty, but we there are some accounts under like Lazada's name, which with a lot of previous tests. So from the dashboard, you'll be able to see, you know, um, the name of your test, what status it's in, like whether it's a draft, whether it's a, a live active test, whether it's um, a completed test, which means it hit the target number of responses before the end date, or whether it's expired, where you know it didn't hit the full number before the, the closing date of the test. And it's from this dashboard that you can create your test. You can also um, add screeners to your test to filter out people. Yeah, so just to show you a sample, so when, when you add a screener, you can, um, you know, you write your questions, you can pick which criteria in each question um, will, that will qualify people to take your test. Yeah. And then when you launch the test, um, before the participants even get to do the task, they have to go through this screener um, to see whether or not they are the right participants. Okay, I see we have a question in chat. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, before I go on to the test creation, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, then I will uh, move on with test creation. So this is just a, a summary of the overall steps when you're creating a test on the unmoderated UT platform. So you have to first, you know, you set up your type of study because we have three different types, uh, the type of device you want to do the test on and also like when the, the study will end and you can also um, add an NDA if you like. And then uh, once you set up the basic details, you can set up your task. So we have four different types of tasks, um, depending on your study type. You can also set the success criteria for each task and um, have post-task survey questions to follow up your tasks with, so you can get a little bit more information. Yeah, then you will set up your participants, whether you want to use your own testers that you've recruited or you want to use UX Army's um, panelists. And then, you know, you get one more um, chance to like review your, your test details, you know, like whether you've set up the correct type of study, pick the right type of device. You can also check your tasks one last time and do a little preview before you launch. Okay, so study type, setting up your study. So we have three different types. So for your prototype study, 
basically this is um, if you are you want to test something on Figma, Envision, or any other type of prototyping tool, you would use the prototype study. Um, website studies, you can test um, live websites. So you would be able to input like specific URLs uh, when you're setting up the task. And the mobile app study, it it's like you'll be able to test a live app that's available in the 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 Apple or Google Play Store. Yeah, and this is um just to show you what happens when you click any of the study types, you'll be able to see um like what type of study is at the top of the setup page. And then there's also the devices that are available. And in the case of the mobile app study, you have to also pick, you know, which um operating system that you want to test on. So let's say you want to test the, the live Lazada app, you would have to create one version for Apple users and another version for Android users. Okay, so this is the, the fuller um, setup page. So um, again, you can double check whether you've picked the right type of study, then you can name your study here, um, then pick your device and set your closing date. And um, for the NDA, this is where you would be able to like choose whether or not you want to edit. Um, you have to upload like a PDF um, and when the users um, are about to start the test, the, the, the NDA will load in a page for them and they will have to like read and click accept before they can proceed. Okay. Um, task types. So here I sh I only have four. Um, but there for the website and mobile app studies. Um, instead of a prototype navigation task, it will be a website navigation task or a app navigation task instead. Okay. So for the prototype navigation task, you will be able to um upload your your Figma, Marvel, or Envision prototypes here, you would have to put it put in the like the sharing link. And you can um you'll be able to like select the screens that you you want to start and end from. And um one um one couple of important things um for you when you're using a prototype for your study, because Figma files can be really big, especially if you're working on a very complex design. For uh, the UT alone, we recommend that you only upload a, a Figma file with the screens that you only need to test. So if you're, if the thing you want to test only has about seven screens, like create a file that only contains those seven screens, don't upload your entire working file because um, your testers will have to wait a very long time for it to load. And especially that's even worse if you know they don't have a particularly strong internet connection. Yeah. Also, um once the test has been launched, you should not change the the file that has been uploaded into the test at all because um the changes will be visible to the users. Like so you don't want them to be actually doing the test and then they can see stuff changing during that time. Oh, oh yeah, before I continue, yeah, so just to just just to repeat, um for prototype navigation, you can set a success path. So you pick your start screen and your end screen, and you can add multiple success paths um if you anticipate that your users won't necessarily navigate to the first path that you set. So maybe your task you've asked, you're asking your users um, to navigate to their settings from their home page. So maybe in that case, the ideal path is that from the home page they go to profile and then they go to settings. But then maybe you have some users who would just go from the home page to the profile page 
and then scroll to where the settings button is and say, uh, yeah, settings is here. I would go to this part and um, you know, change my settings. And they don't actually enter the settings page. So maybe you, you want to account for like scenarios like that where you know they may not go to the actual page, but they know where it is. So you and you want it to still be marked as a success in that case. <laughs> okay, so for the website navigation um, task, it's a little bit different. So you can put in um, the URL of the page that will initially load when the task starts. And then you can choose a success URL as your success criteria. So basically, it's similar to the prototype task in the way that there is a particular page that you want people to end up on. So you can put the URL for that exact page. Um, you can also include like partial matches in the URL. Um, it also like for the for like the case where you you don't expect your users to navigate exactly to one specific page. Yeah. So I I'm not sure if um you guys can see, but um for my start URL, I've put in um a link to the Nielsen Norman groups um page for like their research articles. And my end URL is um a specific page um under articles for um, a page called thematic analysis. So if I wanted to do a partial match as my success URL, maybe I would just set anything that has this um, nngroup.com slash articles part of the URL as my partial match. So maybe someone has just navigated to literally any other article except thematic analysis, but it's still under the articles category. So maybe I just want to be able to see if the users know where they can find articles. Then in this case, you know, a partial match would be an, a good option as your success criteria. Um, for website navigation, another type of success criteria you can um, use is um, task completion time. So you set a, like a minimum time that you want your users to complete a task within and use that to gauge like whether they were able to successfully um, find something. Yeah, so maybe um, if they need to go to a help page, uh, you want them to be able to find it within five seconds, you can set that as an option. Then if they um, go over five seconds, the task will be marked as a failure and you can go and investigate like why why did it take them so long to find the, the help page? Okay, for the app navigation task. So when you're setting it up, you have to put in the link to the app in um, whatever store it's available at. So in this case, I was using the app store. So I have to put in the, the link to the app from the app store. And when my tester um, starts the task, they will be brought to the app store where they have to download the app, or if they already have the app, it will just show an open button. And then you can just like open the app from the app store. And for app navigation tasks or app studies at least, um, the only success criteria you can add would be task completion time because we cannot link to like specific pages in an app. Okay, the next one is um, survey task. So this, um, just to um, let y'all know, we have survey tasks and we have post task surveys, which are two different things. So, um, a survey task is literally just one question on its own, and you can pick from um, any of these six options to, to get additional like quantitative or qualitative uh, data. Okay, the post 
task survey questions is basically, let's say you create your navigation task and you want to immediately follow up with like how easy or difficult was it to um, do the task. So you can add a survey question on to your task and your options for the type of question would be the same as the ones available here. Yeah, so you, you create your task, you click add survey questions, it will open up a dialog where you can go and input your follow-up questions. And when, you're, when you save it, it will show you next to your task that, you know, how many survey questions are attached to this, to this task specifically. Okay, the second type of task that we have um, are, is the image task. So this is, um, you, you basically just show your testers um, static stimuli and ask them to like speak out their feedback. Yeah, so this is good if you just want to um, show your users something to like compare content or like the visuals of um, the image. Yeah, basically anything where you don't need them to go and navigate and interact with, this is a good option. Um, we also have a speaking task where you just give your users a question and ask them to like, you know, just speak their feedback uh, as a response. Um, it, there's no like, there's nothing for them to interact with, nothing for them to look at. Okay, so once you've set up your task, you would um, set up your participants. So you have two available types of participants on our platform. So you can invite your own testers. So let's say you have a, a list of customers you, you know you already want to test your design with. You, this is an option you can use. Or if you don't have time to go and recruit people specially, you can use our panel testers. So when you click on either of these buttons, it opens up this dialogue which lets you choose how many of each type of tester you need so like in this case um you know i have five of each because maybe i i want a nice mix of my own testers and people i don't know yeah uh there are different costs for each but um lazada has like a subscription with us so it's all um, in the form of credits. So that's why even though I've selected people, it shows um, $0. Yeah. And on this page for the panel testers, you will also be able to set some basic demographics for, you know, what kind of um, testers you want to push the test to. Yeah. So maybe you only want to limit it to people in their 20s and 30s. You can set it here can also um you know um you can choose whether you want to test people by their nationality or just like the country of residence so maybe you want to test um a bunch of people in singapore but they don't all have to be citizens you can pick this country of residence option okay and also on the participant setup page there is a function uh, called enable transcription. So because for our unmoderated test, um, what you will receive at after you've collected results is, you know, essentially a screen recording of what your participant is doing and what they are interacting with during the test. And since they are speaking, um, a transcription is very handy to have. So you can turn on a transcription mm -hmm. and it will be generated um, with the, the video. And you have to pick, you know, the language that the test is being conducted in. And, you know, it, for example, in English, you know, people have different accents. So you also have to pick the, like, the country. Yeah. And um, just as a note, it's a transcription. It's supposed to be exactly what your... Um, your users say in the test, it is not a translation. We have had feedback that some people mistake it as a translation function and they, they do not set the language correctly. So in the end, whatever comes out here is useless. Yeah. 
So um, in the confirmation step, you know, this is after you've set up your participants, you can do a final check through, you know, you can look, you can double check the name, you know, what type of study you've selected, the device you're running it on, um, the period of your study, and like how many testers you've selected, as well as the language. And here you will be able to just re quickly review your task. Um, you can't expand it. You can only see like just the preview of the instructions and the order of the task. And you can quickly just go back to edit them from here if you like. And we do have a, a preview button here and it will just open up another page that looks like this. And it's basically a simple preview of what the users will see on their end when they go through the task. So you will be able to see the instructions as you've written them. So this is also a good time to check um, whether you, you know, you've made any typos or like whether, you know, when you read it here, does it make sense? Is it clear to you? Um, the only thing that won't show up in this preview are your prototype links. If you use uh, if you're using a Figma link, it's just going to show up like this. Yeah. So if you need to, to preview your prototype, you have to check it um independently. You can't check it from here. Yeah. And once you launch the test, um you will be able to see like either a test key or a test link. So um the difference is for a test key, this is for an, an app or this is for a test on your mobile, on your smartphone. So if you're doing a prototype on, if you're doing a prototype test study on your mobile phone or a web, a mobile website test, where you're testing an app, you would use this key. And this key is only for um, your own testers. So if you again, if you have like a list of people you want to test, you would send them this, ask them to download our user user advocate app and go to the guest tester button. And like they just need to key this in and they will be able to exact to access the exact test that you've just created. And if you are doing a, a website test like on your desktop, um, you know, you will get a link instead. And then people will just um, click this link and it will run the test from there. Yeah. Later, we will be showing a demo of um, accessing um, a test using the test key. Okay. Um, so yeah, now we'll do the demo. Um, Dia will uh, take over the screen share. Um, yep. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Oh, uh, I think I think we can both can screen share together. Can you give me the code? Hold on. Uh, Dia, can you can you pin Melissa's screen with you? Yeah. Oh, me also. Let me just check. Mm. Okay, so now you can see both like side by side, right? Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, so after you launch your test, you will have the code. And you open your user advocate app from the test from that you can download from the app store and play store. And once you get your uh, key invitation, 
you can select with get faster in here and paste your key invitation key a zero w Melissa, can you check uh, the key? Because seems the test already expired. Uh, okay, one moment. You can share your screen like together. Uh okay. How about how about this? Cause I need to I need to. Sh yeah. Okay. So everyone can see this is the the unmoderated usability testing um dashboard. So I already have this test here prepared. Um. So just so you know um once you've created a test, if you need to make any changes to it, you can just come here to edit test. Yeah, so um, if, if this was a freshly created test, this would be where I type in my study name, pick my device, add my date. Okay, I'm going to just... Yeah, okay. Save test. And move on to like the test, the task setup. So here I've already got, I've, I have a prototype navigation task, I've written my instructions. So um, I want to pick my start screen. So it will open up this page to show you all the, all the screens in your prototype. And then um, you can change it uh, and always click save. So it, the change registers. So I want um, this page here to be my end page. I have a, I have a, um, I can add a survey question, but I already have one here. Yeah, so you can see I have a, a question attached to, to my task here. Then I have a separate question here under a survey task. And here is my, my image task where I've, you can only upload one image to show, by the way. Yeah. And then here is my speaking task where I just have my um, like instructions for this. Okay. So um, here's the participants set up so I can choose how many um, people I want. So let's say I only want to test two of my own testers and two panelists. Yeah. Yeah, we have this little customized message here, which just shows you the, the welcome and thank you message that users will see at the start and end of the test. Um, it's already pre-filled, but you can always customize it if you like. And again, here is the transcription um, setting. Yeah, and you can see all the different uh, languages that are available. Yeah, so in this case, I'll just leave it at English um, Singapore. Okay, so here is my preview page. Uh, you know, I can see like I'm doing a prototype study for smartphone. And it, it's gonna start. It's already started, and it will end next week. And here's a my task summary. And this is what appears when I click the preview button. Yeah. So it will. It's like a slideshow of what will be seen in our our app. Yeah. So 
uh, it looks good to me. So I'm just going to go back to this and launch the test. Yeah. OK, so now I've launched my test. And because I've deliberately chosen to use some of my own testers, I will get this invitation key. So uh, Dia, you can use this key. Uh, the, uh, is the, the code working? Uh, hi, Dia, if you're speaking, I think you're on mute. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Let me check. Can you share the key again to the chat room? Okay. Let me share my screen then. Okay, you you now seeing the the test that you just launched, and you can select any other language that you think you will use. Hi, Dia. Good. Hi, yep. Dia. I think the user advocate app is not showing a sharing screen. It's the browser. Yeah, there. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Can you can you see my screen in yes like okay right now okay okay um okay so next you can you can select any language that you might use in the, during the test and then uh, we'll see this confirmation screen and start the test uh if you if you use your own tester then you share with um, your participant and the, the participant is not our panelist. So they will see the screen and let you let um, take them to like a form for their information, personal information. And they will see um, tasks like this, like uh, this, this section is for the instruction you create to the, from the platform and then uh, they, they can start the task and see this, this is a Figma link, then see the prototype. And we also record the interaction like the yellow pattern in here, you can see this and for example, you already check out your item, then I might click this because I need to go to the basket, then yeah, it can be playing here. So when they already finish the task, they can um, continue and see this possible equation in here. So you can, yeah, they, they can select based on your setting. This is the next task, task two. And if you don't have any prototype or you just uh, creating your image task or speaking task, then they, they will direct it to possible equation. 
yeah this is our uh, image task question so they will only see something like this it is not um uh, like prototype or any, any interaction in there just to know whether they understand about the content or maybe you want to test about the the layout or something yeah and then in the end of the task this is how it looked like when you ask them to to speak out loud during the test and you you select speaking task and then in the end of the task they they are able to submit the test yeah Yeah, I think that's done. And you will be able to see the 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 result, the recording of this screen through the report. Melissa will explain that. Okay. Uh, okay, back to the slides. Okay, so um once you know you've launched your test you can see from the dashboard like how many people have responded um, or not. And you can also view the, the report for that test um, through the dashboard. So you can click either like on the name or on this button and it will open up this page. So first thing you see is a summary, which is, um, you know, it will have like the test duration, like how long are people taking to do your test? Just a simple breakdown of your uh, user demographics for this for your participants, and there's also a a breakdown of like how long did everyone take to do each task on average, and then under task the task results tab, um, this is when you can see more details on each um specific task. So each each task has these four tabs, but not all of them um, apply for all the tasks. So okay, the first, the most important one is a uh, video playback. So this, um, you'll be able to open up the recording of everyone's um, test from here. And even though um, here it says like task four, this will open up the video for the full recording. And yeah, you can see, um, so these little icons here um, is an indication of whether, you know, you've left any comments on the video. Um, and these other icons here are just an indication of whether you've clipped anything for this particular participant. So when you open the video playback um, for anyone, this is what it looks like. So you have the, the full video and it's actually segmented into um, each task. So um, as you saw on Dia's screen just now, um, before she has to do each task, uh, there's a slide to start next task um, interaction um, that will like trigger the, like, the recording getting segmented into each task. Yeah, so um, this is just an easy way for you to, you know, just bounce back and forth to watch each task instead of having to scrub through the video very slowly. And like in this panel at the side, you'll be able to see, um, you, you'll be able to click um, each task number so you can see what you wrote for that task. And also um, it indicates whether for this particular person, whether it was a success or a failure. And at this side panel, you can click on this speech bubble icon to leave um, comments on any part of the video. And uh, it's not shown here, but once you leave a comment, it's actually shown here on the, the task bar as a little orange mark. Yeah. And when you hover over it, you'll be able to see what was written um, at that time or you can go to the comments panel and look at all of the comments that will be written. 
you will also be able to clip sections of the video that uh, you know are particularly interesting or important. And so when you click on the clip button, this uh, pink clipping tool appears. You can just drag it to whatever duration you want. And once you click on clip, it will start processing over here. And af after a while, it will be ready. And you can just you can download it, or you can even share just a link to the clip rather than a link to the whole video. Yeah, and um, you'll also be able to download the entire video or just share a link to the video. And the link is it's more for like people who don't have access to your account to view the video. Okay, then again, back to the task results page. So as mentioned before, some tasks, you can attach a post task question to it. And if you have it, you'll be able to see under um, this survey questions tab, and it will show you all the results for your questions. If your task doesn't have a post, um, post task question, this page will just be blank. Yeah. And the other option here is navigation tree. So um, you this page will open and you can see like what are the, the paths that your testers took when navigating through your prototype or your website. And you know how how many pages did they navigate through? Yeah. And we also have heat maps available if you you need um a stronger like visual reference for like what areas are people focusing on the most in the prototype itself. And um okay, I need to okay, so in the report, you can also see that this there's this export button up here. And from here, you'll be able to export two things. One is this full report that gives you an overview of you know, your testers and like how long they took to do the test. Um, it will also show your survey responses and the navigation paths for your prototypes or website. And we also have a, a metadata report which will give you um, links to your clips and your test footage, and as well as um, a full compilation of all the comments that you've written for um, every single tester. So let me just, uh, let me redo my screen share so I can actually show you the, the documents that come from this. Okay. Um, can everyone see this Excel sheet I have open? Yes, it's sure. Yes. Okay, yes. So this is the exported full report. So you see here I have like my test overview of like my participants and the duration and like the test details. Then I have uh okay, user responses is just to show you um like okay, which participant like what are their de basic details, um, how long did they take to do the test. Yeah, there's also a summary of, you know, all of your task um, details, the instructions that you wrote and what type of task you did. Yeah. And, you know, for survey questions, uh, this is like a compilation of all the results. Yeah, so we have a lot of um, open-ended questions for this one. Yeah. And you also have a you know a summary of like the interactions, how much all the actions people are doing when interacting with your prototype. And then there's a breakdown that goes by task as well. So like for this case, my task one is a survey question. So it just shows me my results here. Um, same for task two and three, but these are open-ended survey questions. Yeah. Okay, so here is um, you know for a prototype task, you can see how people are navigated. So you can see this first user up here, um, they, they really navigated through the pages a lot. Um, but then in comparison, this person just looked at um, the main, the first screen and just gave their feedback based on that. Yeah. Okay. 
then the other this is the metadata that you can download yeah so here i have like links to my video and um so i've left a lot of comments on the video while i was processing like the results for this particular study so you can see like all of the comments yeah and um this is um this number here is just the tester id so as long as it's the same you can see it's all these are for the same person yeah okay so that's actually um the end of it so do we have any questions right now Uh, no questions from anyone? Hi, I think if we don't have any questions or if you, um, f uh, after reviewing this um, trainings and you have some clarification on how to do it, you may reach out to our team so that we can relay the questions to UX Army. Is that okay? Uh, thanks, Melissa and team. Um, any more additional instruction, um, Harris? or we can end or wrap up the training. Well, all good. Uh, okay. Uh, next, next, week, next week will be for card sorting. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, UX Army. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye.